Skip isn't exactly a household name, but if you've been around Nintendo platforms long enough, chances are you have some knowledge of their lead franchise, Chibi Robo. This tiny robot's main goal is to keep the comparatively massive world free of filth. In doing so, he ends up helping a cast of humans and living toys find happiness. It's humorous and lighthearted, but deals with real world problems like overcoming a fear of change, confessing a one-sided love, and keeping a family from falling apart. The storytelling, gameplay concepts, and world structure are a unique flavor that's often shared with their other releases, such as Gift Pia for the GameCube, WiiWare Snowpack Park, and the Wii's Captain Rainbow. I recently picked up the latter, which made me ask, what is Skip up to today? I fully expected the answer to be that they're making mobile apps, but that's only half true. If you just look up Skip itself, you'll quickly hit a brick wall. As of this video, their last website update was October 2015, announcing the sale of Chibi Robo Ziplash. For small companies in particular, it's not uncommon for websites to get out of date due to negligence. This is especially true when they haven't announced anything in some time. Things get a bit more concerning when digging further. Their last Twitter post was October 2015, Meanwhile, the Facebook page listed on their Twitter profile is now deactivated. Hiroshi Suzuki seems to be the lead producer and CEO at Skip. Looking at what appears to be his Twitter feed, it still links the company website in his bio. Though it's not exactly a thriving account, as of this video, the last post is a retweet from February 2019. Even more concerning, the last message about anything Skip related was also October 2015 though in early 2018, he did retweet the burning Chibi Robo meme. Skimming the rest of the account, cryptocurrency is the main topic of discussion. However, another URL is listed for Field System, who is a mobile app developer with various utilities as well as games for Apple phones. This link is also dead, with the only archived snapshot being from before 2011 when the company was making animations for phones. I was able to see a list of their apps via the Apple Store page, but mid-research, this became no longer available. From my memory, many of them looked fairly generic, with the most flashy being Doko Doko Animal Brain Training Game Trains the Right Brain with Cute Animals. Thankfully, I saved some screenshots at the time, so I have at least something to show you. The game also only had two reviews from 2016. It seems to be their last release, and with the developer's page being disabled on both Google Play and Apple Store, I don't have a ton of confidence they'll be putting anything else out. Despite there being no real communication from Skip after 2015, there is one notable change that happened in the background. Skip Company Limited actually isn't their name anymore. In 2016, they changed to Skip Incorporated. I was able to find this using their corporate number listed on their Japanese Wikipedia page. This number lines up with the information on IR Bank as well as Hojin Bango, which as far as I can tell are tax agencies. Both sites also list the name change as of June 23rd, 2016. We can further confirm this change via Skip's website footer that lists 2016 Skip Incorporated. Using the Wayback Machine to get a version from earlier that year, the site lists 2015 Skip Company Limited. I'm far from an expert on this stuff, but from talking to the CEO at my current employer, supposedly US companies will switch to be incorporated when looking to seek investment or sell to another entity. That being said, it sounds like there's various other tax reasons as well, so this isn't a sure sign that Skip was running low on monetary resources. And I'm not sure how this would differ in Japan. This probably would have been the end of my search, but sitting on their website is the company's corporate address. Plop it into Google Maps, and at first it doesn't seem like there's too much going on here. Unsurprisingly, with an office full of suites, it's not like there would be a huge skip sign out front. However, we can see this little board here, just barely. This big truck is kinda in the way, isn't it? Rolling back to an image from May 2018, we have a clearer view here, yet there has been a change. The top slot on this sign in the June 2019 image was covered up by some sort of paint or, or plastic, though the text is still slightly visible and matches the 2018 image. The other side of the sign is a bit more readable. According to IR Bank and Hojin Bongo, the full business name for Skip is what you see on screen now. This matches the number of characters for the first line of this panel. The last four are katakana for Skip. The second line leads with the same four characters, but includes what I believe is the following katakana. 
or field system in English, which would make sense given the CEO's Twitter listing. So what's going on here? The best outcome would be the simplest answer. They've simply moved offices and are still operating as normal. The worst would be that the company is no more. Then there's the in-between. Perhaps they're still in operation, but maybe have undergone some change where their previous office space is no longer needed. We're not that far out from their last game, yet it has been longer than usual. Most of their other titles released about one to three years apart. We're now at four with not a single project announced. Initially, I was beginning to lean toward the no longer in operation conclusion. Everything we've discussed up until this point paints a bad picture. It also doesn't help that the circumstances surrounding Chibi Robo Ziplash's release weren't great either. The title reportedly launched with poor sales in Japan. Meanwhile, worldwide, VG Charts reports 320,000 units sold, although they're not always accurate. For some more anecdotal evidence, I've personally seen the game heavily discounted for multiple years now. I got my copy for less than $10 new with Amiibo. I looked at a US Amazon price tracking website for new condition listings. The green bar shows Amazon's pricing and the blue bar shows offerings by third party sellers. Less than a year later, Ziplash was already dropping under $20. Keep in mind, successful Nintendo games tend to hold their value. Another note is that in September 2015, Nintendo's Kensuke Tanabe said that Ziplash was likely the last chance Chibi Robo would get to become a success. It's not like the series has been healthy in the past. The third release didn't even get localized. This is Skip's leading franchise, so it's a bit telling if even it can't stay above water. Though, there is one tiny beacon of hope. In Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, there are Skip-related stickers and a Chibi Robo Me Gunner costume set. Given its 2018 release, it has their new name in the credits. While I can't say for sure, my educated guess at this point is that the company has, at the very least, changed from its previous form. Things don't line up with them being an active developer. This is probably as far as I'll take my research. If you want to contribute, I do have some ideas of where to go next. If there's a Japanese government entity that keeps public record of the current status of companies, we should check that. It also could be worth looking into the credits of the last few games released by them and see if anybody has an employment history online. Are any of them still listed as currently working at Skip? If they left, what year? I tried looking at a handful of LinkedIn profiles, but I had trouble identifying anyone in specific, though I would encourage you only to use public information. Don't go around disrupting the privacy of these people's lives. I won't say Skip's games are amazing. However, their style is so unique that they're immediately identifiable by it alone. My hope is that they're still around or, or re-emerge in some other form. Who knows, maybe we'll get that Chibi Robo Direct sometime soon. Thanks for watching! One Controller Port has a focus on games with a notable place in history, as well as titles with a distinct take on a franchise or genre. Visit OneControllerPort.com for videos, podcasts, streams, and articles. You can also follow me on Twitter and Twitch via the links in the description. 